Like most stories of its kind, there are many variations to the Atko ghost legend. They all have similar aspects however. They all start with a young boy who is playing with a ball on Burnt Mill Road. One way or another, the ball is sent across the street and the boy is forced to retrieve it. Unfortunately, the boy is unaware a car is heading straight for him. In my research, I found six versions of this story. Only one had an estimated death date. It stated the incident occurred sometime in the 50s. With this information, I checked two obituary sites for deaths in Atco during this decade. Since no one had offered a name or age for this boy, I couldn't narrow down my search. Nevertheless, both sites showed no deaths in this time span. On a site dedicated to the New Jersey Pine Barrens, I found a discussion on ghost stories of the area. Since 1992, people have been on the hunt for the Atco ghost. I couldn't find the source of this legend, but one forum user claims it has been around for about 30 years, since the 70s. The Atco Raceway was not constructed until 1960, so this legend could have served as a warning to children, as Burnt Mill Road was supposedly used for drag races. To be better prepared for the night journey, my friends and I decided to visit Atco in the daytime. The trip there was quite beautiful and the town itself seemed normal. Driving down the road seemed simple enough, until the asphalt ended and a dirt road took its place. Since the GPS claimed Burnt Mill Road continued into the dirt road, we kept driving. Then, we noticed some signs posted on the trees, so I visited the local police station and made sure we were able to drive down the road. Once the police reassured us, we returned to follow the road to its end. We were lucky enough to capture some of its inhabitants, none of which seemed otherworldly. After further investigating, I found the ritual was meant to be performed only on the asphalt part of the road. Despite seeing others go into the forest, the veterans to Burnt Mill Road, who have successfully seen the ghost, have attempted the rituals back when the road was a dead end. This is also consistent with the terminology used in the testimonies. Driving down the road at night was a completely different experience. For time and safety's sake, we only managed to perform two rituals. The first ritual had no specific version of the legend. It required us to park the car on the side of the road and turn it off. Then, I would walk 20 feet away from where I thought the ghost would appear. After walking 20 feet, I was supposed to turn around and the boy would be walking toward me. To cover all our bases, I had one camera with me while I walked, another facing the opposite direction, and my brother filmed my walk from behind. Once the car was turned off, it was pitch black. I calculated 20 feet to be 24 steps for me, and I was off. I used a flashlight to light my way and turned around. I didn't see anything. After reviewing the footage, the only strange thing I caught was a light coming on from behind us. It was most likely a street light, but it was still unsettling to see on film. More so, when I realized it turned on when I began the ceremony and turned off when I finished. As we prepared for the next ritual, my family heard a noise beside us. When my brother flashed a light, we saw a tree branch moving. This in itself is not unusual, until you notice how vigorously it moved. No other branches were moving the same way. Perhaps that branch was already broken and about to fall off, but it wasn't even windy that night. Unless someone had tied a line to the tree and was moving it from afar, we couldn't really explain the movement at the time. For the second ritual, we had to drive to the end of the road and make a U-turn. We would flash our lights three times, like they would before drag races, and turn off the car. With our focus on the distant street light, we should have seen a figure crossing the road from one side to the other, chasing a ball. As we sat in the car, we filmed all around us. The only lights seen belonged to the Waterford Township Public Works. Neither we nor our cameras could see anything except for the lone street light in the distance. Aside from the uneasiness of being in an unfamiliar environment, there doesn't seem to be any definitive proof of the ghost child on Burnt Mill Road. Of us all, my mother was the only one who claimed to have seen something cross the road as I was setting up the cameras for the first ritual. I thought I might have seen something in the darkness of the second ritual, but I'm convinced we were just experiencing pareidolia. In the end, this just seems like another precautionary tale told to keep children from the same fate as that boy. Yet, this still doesn't explain all the supposed sightings of this phantom.